What cinema sin is the most irritating? That filmmakers need to stop committing immediately. Fight scenes that constantly cut to different angles so often you can barely tell what's happening in the fight. I feel like it's gotten better of late though. They do that when the actors are bad at fight choreography and need a lot of takes, looking at you, iron fist. Coffee cups. Just put some damn water in it to stop actors from waving them all over the place. FFS. Every time. Edit, since people keep commenting that they've never seen this, let me just google this for you and apparently it's an old Twitter meme hashtag empty cupowards if anyone wants to annoy themselves, enjoy. God I hate that. And it's a fresh cup just handed to them and they tip it all the way up like 5 year old playing tea party. I always laugh at that too. Oh thanks for the piping hot cup of coffee. Now I'll dump it down my chin and chest. Lol. Final fight. Bad guy versus good guy. The first 70% of the fight the good guy is going to get his ass handed to him. He's gonna be slow, stand around waiting for the punch to hit him and generally just be a way worse fighter than he was throughout he whole movie so far. Then suddenly he gets magical strength from somewhere and ducks up the bad guy. I so love Taken when the final mastermind guy just got point blank taken out before he could even finish his first sentence. Or when the good guy kills countless goons without a second thought but has a moral dilemma once he reaches the main baddie. All these hard-working poor delinquents who turn to a life of crime largely due to economic factors? No dilemma, kill him. But the super wealthy psychopathic duck who orchestrated all of this? Hmm. This is what makes me laugh about the trend of making a villain sympathetic. What about his lackeys? If the villain hires morally unambiguous henchmen then doesn't that make the villain absolutely unsympathetic? I just want to know where the Joker is hiring his goons. Does he have a website? A booth at career fairs? A team of recruiters? What are they telling the recruits about the line of work? How much are they paid? Do they have insurance or other benefits through their workplace? Do they file taxes? So many questions. It's not a narrative trope but dogshit camera work with a thousand cuts to make it feel more epic. In ye olden times, martial arts movies had a lot of quick cuts to convey speed but these were films that lived and died on the beauty of their choreography. More and more Hollywood actions movies emulate that trope, turning action scenes into unwatchable garbage where the camera cuts to a different angle so many times in rapid succession that your brain can't process what you're even seeing. Arguably the nadir of the trend, so far, has been this infamous clip from Taken 3, featuring 15 cuts in 6 seconds for a guy jumping a fence. Yes, the quick cuts communicate speed, but you know what also communicates speed? People moving quickly. The obligatory feedback every time someone steps up to a microphone. They feedback for certain reasons, not just because you are about to use it. SMH. It's just picking up on the character's shyness awkwardness. Microphones are calibrated to do that to draw attention to people who lack confidence. They can sense fear. The smart friend tells the main character some weird techno babble while they're researching and the main character says English please, then the smart one says it in a way the audience can understand. And half the time it's gibberish if I can bypass the firewall and rewire the router to hack into the mainframe we have a shot. Mash his keyboard, I'm in. I mean, the alternative that's closer to reality is kinda cool, but less action intensive. Picks up phone hi, this is Paul from it. We're rolling out a new Windows update. I either need you to sit here with me for about 2 hours and re-enter your password like 40 times, or if you give me your username and password you can probably just go get coffee or something. Oh yeah, sure. There are shows that did it this way, though, and I personally always thought it was a lot more entertaining. My immediate thought is Burn Notice, where it was just a constant string of simple lies to get people to give them access data. It brought some levity, and it was more realistic. Wait, I can explain. Proceeds to do everything but explain also, can we get rid of forget everything you think you know? From trailers? I saw a commercial on late night TV, it said forget everything you know about slip covers. So I did. And it was a load off my mind. But then the commercial tried to sell me slip covers, and I didn't know what the hell they were. Rip Mitch. Reminds me of an old Norm MacDonald joke, forget everything you think you know about bread, great, now let me tell you about my new invention, Red. The hero pours vodka over Hisher wounds, uses a half-assed bandage, 
and isn't bothered by the injury for the rest of the film. The very idea that getting shot through the shoulder is no big deal. If you get shot where most people get shot in movies you are going to be, at the very least, spending a lot of time with doctors and physical therapists. It also depends who you are in the movie, henchmen fall down dead from a bullet graze, hero takes a shot to the chest and still manages to save the day. Not to mention how often people just flop over dead. Even with a major artery cut most people live several minutes. People wouldn't be quite as enthusiastic about the hero gunning down dozens of goons if we had to listen to them slowly dying while begging for help and screaming in pain and calling out to their parents. Main character's love interest investigates a sound they heard only to find the main character in a compromising position with another person that was forcing themselves on them. The main character's love interest then runs away asking no questions. Like I know for a fact you heard the guy say stop or get off me that's why you investigated so why not ask questions? Wait. I can explain. 40 minutes of pointless drama later oh, the explanation is reasonable, okay. I saw the right thing on a soap opera, General Hospital, a little while back. Girl A's mother drugs her sister, Girl B, and stuffs her into bed with Girl A's unconscious boyfriend. Then she invites Girl A to see the site. Girl A initially storm off, but the boyfriend finds her in the lobby and explains himself. Because he has a nasty bump on his head, she agrees to go back to the hotel room and they discover that Girl B was drugged. All of this happens within one episode. Of course, the soap opera killed Girl A like a week later because you just can't be a non-drama queen on a soap. You're mostly right. I hate that I know this. They killed Girl A because she signed a contract on a bigger better primetime show. They killed her because the actress was leaving. It just happened to play into the drama well. Diffusing the bomb with just a second or two left. Hey, we better put a big digital readout on this bomb that we'll never see again, so the hero knows exactly how much time he has to defuse it. Every driving scene that involves talking always has the driver maintaining eye contact with the passenger for more than 10 seconds at a time. Like who does this in real life? It's incredibly dangerous. When I'm talking while driving I always keep my eyes on the road. Looking away for a mere 3 seconds at high speed is enough to crash into something. Whenever a character who's driving looks away from the road to talk, and the camera stays on them, I always assume it's to set up a crash, or a truck or other large vehicle is going to come into focus behind the driver in the shot and crash into the side of the car. Same and I only see it happen like 1 in 50 but I still get anxious every time. Characters who work in very low paying jobs, yet live by themselves in expensive homes in safe neighborhoods, and there is no explanation of how they can pay for a million dollar home on minimum wage income. I hate it when characters have to kiss at the most inappropriate time. Like something bad is gonna happen, that's when they think is the right time to kiss. Characters initially avoiding calling each other by their name so the audience can immediately know how they are related. Hey sis. What's up my cousin? Take cover behind the door. There are sniper rounds that can penetrate military vehicles, the duck is a door gonna do? Or flip the table and hide behind thin layer of wood. Plus 100 to protection. Gunfire in enclosed spaces followed by conversation. Gunfire is ducking loud and after a Hollywood firefight without ear protection, all you'd hear is mop mop mop. Criminal minds at a car chase seen right after they were authorized use of fully automatic weapons. Guy in the passenger seat fires one from a car window and the driver freaks out because of the noise. Both of them are somewhat deaf for the rest of the scene. Hashtag X200B, edit, episode is rite of passage. Scene is right near the end of the episode. Criminal Minds is very accurate with its portrayal to be honest. It subverts a lot of tropes obviously they can't be too real, but they get the details right. Except that every time a hammerless Glock service pistol is drawn, it makes a ducking sound sampled from a revolver. Every. Single. Time. Except that every time a hammerless Glock service pistol is drawn anytime any gun is raised, ever, it makes a ducking sound sampled from a revolver. Fifi. <laughs>